Every year at Nationals, all the teams have their own special team jerseys. And last year, Team Puerto Rico really raised the bar. I mean, check these threads out. It's going to be hard to top this. Now, I was happy to oblige them. But right now, we're going to talk some geometry. I'm going to show you my all-time favorite geometry problem-solving strategy. Draw a diagram, label everything you know, hope something good happens. I'm going to try that right here. We're looking for the radius of a circle inscribed in a triangle with sides of length 5, 12, and 13. Well, we recognize these numbers right here. 5 squared plus 12 squared is 13 squared. This is a 5, 12, 13 right triangle. So we're going to draw a right triangle, and then we'll label what we know. Right triangle, very important to label that right angle. And we know that one of the legs has length 5, one of the legs has length 12, and the hypotenuse over here has length 13. And while we're looking for the radius of the circle inscribed in a triangle, so we need to add that circle in here. So there's our circle, not a very pretty circle, but it'll do. And we're interested in the radius, so we need to add a radius to this diagram. Now, a natural place to add the radius is we draw it to the points of tangency, because the radius perpendicular to the tangent at the point of tangency, and we really like right angles. We draw in those three radii, and we see these three right angles here. We see we've got a rectangle here. That's a right angle as well. Now we're looking for the radius. Uh, that means we're going to have to label the radius. We don't know what it is. That's what variables are for. And we're going to go ahead and add those to the diagram. And as soon as we drop those r's in there for the radius, we see these two are equal. Our rectangle just became a square. This is a square, so we know these sides are r as well. And again, key strategy here is I'm just labeling everything as I figure it out. Once I figure out something new, I think, hey, do I know anything I can use with that? Well, I see this r that I just discovered. I know that this whole thing is 5, so this up here is 5 minus r. Use that same strategy over here. Tells me that this length right there is 12 minus r. Hmm, seems a little stuck. Another key strategy here is I think, what piece of information have I not used yet? I haven't really used this 13 that's sitting over there. So I'm going to look along here. I'm going to see this tangent is equal in length to this tangent right here. So I know that this length is 12 minus r. I use that same strategy again up here. You know, whenever I use a strategy and I learn something, I look for another way to use that strategy right away. It might have more to give. Take this 5 minus r equals this segment over here. It's also going to be 5 minus r. Now, one of the reasons we draw a diagram, label everything, is what we're hoping to find is two different expressions for the same thing. I've got two different expressions for this length right here. First, it's 13. And then second, it's the sum of these two, 5 minus r plus 12 minus r. So I can add these two together. 5 minus r plus 12 minus r gives me 17 minus 2r. Just adding these two together, and that has to equal 13. So now I just add 2r to both sides, subtract 13 from both sides, and I have 4 equals 2r, and that tells me that r is 2. And since I use my variable for the thing I'm looking for, I can just write down that 2 as my answer. I'm ready for the next problem. All right, well, here they gave us the diagram. That's awfully convenient. The points C and D on the sides of a right triangle. I have another right triangle here, A, B, E, such that these four segments each have length one inch. So they're all the same length. They got them all conveniently marked in the diagram for us. If they hadn't done that, that should have been the first thing you do is mark everything so you know what's equal. And we're looking for the measure of this angle, B, A, E. Well, once again, we're going to assign a variable to the thing we're looking for. We're looking for this angle right here. We're going to call that x. Now let's go looking for other things we can find. We have an isosceles triangle right here that tells me that this is x. And we have the right triangle right here that tells me that this angle over here is 90 minus x. And well, I have another isosceles triangle right over here, so that tells me that that angle is also 90 minus x. And now there are a whole bunch of things I can figure out. I can figure out that angle in terms of x, that angle in terms of x. I can also go after this one. I'm going to choose this one up here because I see that these three angles have to add to 180, but these two angles add to 90. That tells me that this is a right angle. So that when I add these three together, I get 180. 
That's a right angle. We like right angles. This is an isosceles triangle. Isosceles right triangle. That tells me that these two are 45. Again, all I'm doing is just writing down the things as I discover them. And since these two are 45, well, I know what this angle is. This angle's 45. Because these two have to add together to 90. And this one's 135. Because these two have to add together to be 180. And now I've got a bunch of ways I can figure out x. I'm going to use this triangle right here. We add up these three angles. Have to get 180. And again, all I did here, key strategy, is to start labeling things and hope for something good to happen. And over here, I can combine these two x's and get 2x. Subtract 45 from both sides. I get 135. Divide both sides by 2. And we get our answer. X is 67.5. And since we used the variable as the thing we actually want to define, we can just write this down as our answer. And we're all finished. And that one was for you, Team Puerto Rico.